what is up guys hope everyone had an amazing day so in this video I'm going to explain to you my deck deck around Meloku the cloud admitter Meloku is a five a five drop for four generic one blue that has flying and says for one for one mana return a land you control to its owner's hand put a one one blue illusion creature with flying into play so by itself it can generate tokens by bouncing a land you can tap land for one mana, then bounce it to your hand. Um, without, you, know, like you can bounce the land you tap to your, to your hand, which can which can generate blue illusion tokens with flying. She herself has flying, and she's a two-four body. So I'm just gonna get right into the main combo in this deck. So with Maloka on the battlefield, you can pay one and then turn a land you control to its owner's hand. Then create a blue, uh, blue illusion token with flying. Then walking atlas, every time you bounce a land to your hand, you can tap walking atlas and then place another land in the battlefield again. And then retreat to Coralheim says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You may tap or untap target creature and then scry one. So basically what this combo is, is you, you bounce a land to your hand, generate one blue illusion to get your token with flying you tap walking atlas to put that land you bounce back onto the battlefield and then you may untap walking atlas again this will net you infinite blue illusion creature tokens of flying and yeah that's it also um with uyo silent prophet you can bounce two lands to your owner's hand then you may copy a target instant or sorcery with Walking Atlas and the retreat, the, court, the retreat to Coralheim, you can put two lands back into play, and then do and then trigger Uyo Silent Prophet again. Um, then what you want to do is you want to cast and dampen thought, bounce two lands. Okay, I'll share this for a bit longer. Um, dampen thought says target player puts a top four cards of his or library into his or graveyard. You can copy this with Uyo, put the lands back into play with the Walking Atlas and retreat to Coralheim. And then you can mull everyone infinitely and pass the turn and win the game. So ways to... Okay, so I'm first going to go into ways to protect the combo. Um, Meloko is a wizard, so you can cast Wizards of Thought when she's out of on the battlefield for two mana and counter any spell. You can thwart says you may return three islands you control to your owner's hand instead of playing thwart's mana cost. Then you counter the spell for free. Um, this deck has like you, it's not that bad of a draw. Um, there's cards in this deck that give you um, no hand size, like it maximizes your hand size to nothing. I mean, to like infinite. You can this you know you have no maximum hand size. Um, and it's a very good card to come in clutch when you want to protect your combo without worrying about um, having mana open. Spell Pierce, a good one mana blue spell to counter anything, any non-creature spell for unless they pay two. Abjure, sacrifice a blue permanent counter target spell. For one mana you can sacrifice a, a illusion token with flying and then counter any spell. Prohibit. Very down on the ground, can, can counter target spell if it's converted mana cost is 2 or less. Um, and if you kick it, you can counter any 4 or less spell. So there's a sabotage, a hard counter spell that also lets you surveil. Whirlwind Denial, very good if someone is about to storm off, you can counter each ability or spell unless they pay 4. Negate, a hard counter spell just to counter any non creature spell with no drawback to you or them. Um, this spell, a very good one mana spell to cast to counter any instant. Um, foil also, same with Thwart, um, you may discard the island and another spell and then counter the spell with... Uh, you, you may discard an island and another card that to pay the spell's mana cost. So you bounce a land to your, to your hand, you discard this and another spell and then you counter something for free. That's it with uh, counter magic in the deck. Then digging for the combo is Omen of the Sea. Very good. It's an enchantment that, that has flash and it says uh, scry 2, draw 1. Then in a late game you can sacrifice to scry 2. 
flow of ideas is a very good card in this deck, especially if you have a lot of islands. Um, it says draw a card for each island you control. For six mana, that's not bad. You can play this in the late game, you can ramp into this early on. It's just very good card draw. Um, Mysteries of the Deep, it's for five mana, draw two cards, and if a land enters the battlefield in this turn uh, in, under your control, you can draw three instead. Fact of Fiction, reveal the top five, opponent separates them into two piles, you get one pile and then the rest goes into your graveyard. Winged Words will cost you two mana um, if you control a creature with flying, and with Maloku out on the battlefield, you will definitely have a flyer. Search for Knowledge, a very good loot spell, or you can discard, you draw three, discard two, unless you discard an artifact. Um, Thirst for Meaning, draw three cards and discard two cards, unless you discard an enchantment card. Saloon Division um, says, look at the top six of your library, you may reveal an instant or sorcery card from them and put into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This is a, a very good deck spell to look at the top six. Scour all possibilities, um, scry 2, draw 1, and then it has flashback. Deliberate, scry 2, draw 1, doesn't have flashback, but it's instant speed. Um, curate, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your graveyard, and the, rest on the ba and the rest back on top of your library in any order, and then draw a card. So with this, you can look at the top two, uh, rearrange them, and then, uh, yeah, you re rearrange them, and then draw a card, or you can mull one. Multiple choice is a very versatile card in this deck. You can pay mana. X can be one. You scry one, draw a card. X is two. You may choose a target. They return a creature they control to its owner's hand. If X is three, create a four for blue and red elemental creature token. And then for if X is four, you can do all of the above. So this is a very versatile, very good card. It's never a bad draw. Um, good old opt, cry one, draw one. Merfolk Looter, ways to dig for your combo pieces with no drawback. You can just tap it each turn and then draw a card and discard a card. And that's it for digging for the combo. Um, ways to protect your combo or creatures is you see a card approach. It's one of the new cards. Um, you may tap target creature or you can give a, a target creature hexproof. Um, dive down also gives a creature plus zero plus three and gains hex proof and that's it for protecting your combo there is not a lot of ways to protect your combo because you have counter magic there's a lot of counter magic in the deck to protect your combo and creatures as well but um, cards the creatures in this deck is first off Moldrifter. you can evoke it for three and then draw two cards or you can play it for five and then you have a flying two two and you need two cards of that guardian of the tazim a bit of a landfall theme um, whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control tap target creature and opponent controls if that land is an island that creature doesn't untap during its next during its control this next untap step so with this you can bounce like if you if you know the combo you can basically tap each creature um, each target creature and opponent controls it is always going to be an island so they don't untap during the next untap step so you can tap everything down wait for your next turn and then they're still not untapped and then you can swing and they have no blockers then tolerant um, a way to net value of all the instants and sorceries you cast if you cast a dispel you create a 2-2 blue track flying and they also have flying so winged, winged words will always net you two cards if you have a drake on the battlefield and it will cost two murmuring mystic also a card to net value of any instant source that you, you cast you also create flying blue blue bird blue bird illusions um archaeomancer ways to get back any counter spell or any loot spell basically any instant sorcery in the deck um if you want to use it for redundancy and then get it back wave break hippocamp Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. This is a very good card because if you play a counter spell, this triggers and then you draw a card back. You can basically just draw for free essentially. Baron, Talarian, and Ar Archmage. Another good way to net value of bouncing islands back to your hand. Baron, Talarian, Archmage reads. 
when Baron Talorian Alkwaits enters the battlefield, return up to one other target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand, so you can bounce anything. And then at the beginning beginning of your end step, if a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield, this turn draw a card. So with this, if you end this, you can bounce anything to your hand, or you can bounce an island to your hand each turn and then draw a card of him. So Rotami Cloud Skater, um, return a land to its owner to return a land you control to its owner's hand, draw a card, then discard a card. It's a two mana loot spell if you want lands in your hand to, for example, cast Thwart or this if you need to loot and you don't want to discard anything in your hand. Ghostly Pulferer, a very versatile card in this deck. Um, it says whenever Ghostly Pulferer becomes untapped, you may pay two if you do draw a card. So if you can uh, you can attack with him, discard a card, he can be blocked, and then when he comes untapped, you can pay two to draw a card. And then whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, you can draw a card. This will always come always come in handy if they are playing out of the cards out of the graveyard or from uh, if they play for a tal card. Um, Ogre of Bolas, it's a 1-3 body for 2 mana, that says look at the top 3 cards of your library, you may reveal an instant or sorcery card from them, from among them and put them in your hand. It's a good way to dig for, um, dig for spells and it's also a 1-3 body. Ruin Crab comes in clutch with the infinite land drop combo, because um, Ruin Crab says whenever you la uh, land in the spell under your control, each opponent pulls 3 cards. So you don't always need damp and thought, you can also have Ruin Crab to mull everyone for three for each land entering the battlefield. That's it for the creatures. Um, bouncing stuff is not a lot, but they're very good and helpful. Um, Aether Eyes, it's an instant speed so um, instant speed card for four mana that says to retel, return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. This can block a lot of stuff if they attack, it can uh, bounce big creatures for only three mana. And it can essentially stop a combat phase. Blink of an eye, it's a two mana instant that says return target non and permanent to its under hand. And if you kicked it, you can draw a card as well. So on turn two, you can blink anything. And then if you kick it, you can draw a card of it. And then it replaces it itself. And then with Wave Break Hippocamp out on the battlefield, you can also net a card of Wave Break Hippocamp. And you can kick this to uh, draw a card as well. Um, unsummon just one mana instant to return any creature to its owner's hand. Stern this missile, you can return a creature or enchantment to its owner's hand for one mana and its instant speed. And that's it for bouncing stuff. Um, now we are going to get to the ramp. Traveler's Amulet gets you a uh, island if you sacrifice it and pay one mana to maybe fill your hand if you're missing land drops or if you want to ramp. If you like, if you're if you want a land to um, throw into the battlefield with Walking Atlas. Sessage Ring, a 4 mana artifact that taps for 2. Um, Hedron Archive, 4 mana that taps for 2 and you can sacrifice it by paying 2 mana and then draw a card. Mana Prism, it's a 3 mana spell that taps for 1 or you can filter any colored mana of any colorless mana. Um, spell Satchel, it's a 2 mana mana rock that has Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, put a book counter on spell satchel. So you can play this, play an opt, and then tap it for colorless, or you can remove three book counters and draw a card. Sky Diamond, it's a two mana artifact that comes in tapped, but you can tap it for one blue. Prismatic Lens, two mana, taps for colorless, and then you can filter any co colorless mana in your mana pool. Um, this is a very efficient ramp spell because it's you pay two mana to ramp one and then yeah it's just very good um corrupted gravestone same story as um prismatic lens you it's two mana comes in tapped and you can choose a color in your graveyard add one mana of that color to your mana pool um and that's it for the enchant oh, artifacts and now we're gonna get to the utility enchantments verity circle is very good i personally like this card a lot and if a deck has blue in it, he deserves this as well. It says whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it doesn't, if it isn't being declared as an attack, you may draw a card. This comes in very handy because there is cards in the deck that tap other uh, target creatures, and 
this will draw you one card each time and then for five mana you can you can tap target creature without flying this comes in handy if you're netting infinite no you're not netting infinite mana sorry um then chase a sanctum each instant or sorcery casts one less and then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery scry one this comes in clutch when you want to filter through you know if you're missing land drops you can cast an opt then scry and then scry one more and then draw um trial of evidence whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell investigate so this turns your instant and sorceries into a two mana draw spell or like an artifact that draws you two because when there's transmutation it nullifies any commander or very high value creature for two mana this is very good um this it comes in handy a lot um wizard class some of the new cards um for one mana enchantment it says you have no maximum hand size so in this case bouncing islands to your hand isn't that a bad isn't that much of a bad thing um you have no maximum hand size so you will never worry about discarding excess cards in your hand and then you can upgrade it to become level two and then draw two and then for level three whenever you draw a card put a one plus one plus one counter on top creature you control but i mostly added this to the deck to have no maximum hand size see your sundial it has landfall Whenever a land enters a battle under your control, you may pay two and then draw a card. So with all the landfall happening in this deck and lands bouncing back to your hand, you can always pay two to draw a card. Same with um, Trial of Evidence, but this is, yeah, this is, it only happens if you have a land into the battlefield. So it's not, it's not like a, a, a clue token that's on the battlefield, but this comes in very handy if you want to. Um, draw cards of landfall trigger and um, druidic satchel one of the new cards this reads reveal the top card of your library if it's a creature create the one one sapling creature token if it's a land card put that card in the battlefield under your control if it's a non-land non if it's a non-creature non-land card you gain two life but mostly this is this comes in handy if you um, want to have lands into the battlefield without casting them from your hand and it's just a, a value engine basically um surveyor scope is a two mana it says exile surveyor scope search your library for x basic lands grand cards where x is the number of players who control at least two more lands than you put those cards under the battlefield then shuffle your library so with this you can bounce islands back to your hand and then tap this and then you can essentially go get let's say um, all your opponents have seven lands on the battlefield you tap um, three lands with Maloku and bring them to your hand then you tap this and then you get back three basic lands and they come into the battlefield and they don't come in tapped so you can bounce let's say four lands to your hand you have three lands your opponents have seven you tap this you exile it and then bring back four lands to the battlefield untapped and then you can essentially ramp and then yeah just get um a lot of thin your deck as well and get a lot of basic lands on the battlefield and in your hand then explore the scope whenever equipped creature attacks look at the top card of your library if it's a land card you may put it on the battlefield tap this comes in very handy with landfall triggers and ramping you a little bit more and that is it from the utility and then we are going to get to the land base so to keep this deck budget and low to the ground um cost cost wise um i included 36 basic islands to keep the deck budget and um yeah it's just like in most um budget decks we don't include any utility lands in the land base because you want the value to come from the cards in the in the um in your library instead of i mean like in the the 99 instead of from the land base i originally did include mystic sanctuary but it was close to a dollar and i didn't want a land to take up that much value but yeah guys if you have any suggestions for the deck or if you like the deck deck please um drop a like um comment if you enjoyed it i want some feedback from you guys um also don't forget to subscribe and 
tick the bell icon because I'm going to upload a lot more dick dicks. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great week.